Welcome all. In the last lecture, we discussed about the braking system used in traction systems. And we concluded that the regenerative braking system uh, employed in electric traction can be very efficient. In this lecture, we will try to derive an expression for the energy return during the regenerative braking in electric traction systems. We all know that an uh, accelerating body stores energy in the form of kinetic energy. That is, the energy stored during acceleration will be kin the kinetic energy and it will be equal to half times the m times the speed of the squ uh, speed square where uh, v is the speed in kilometers per hour and m is the dead weight of the body. So, in the costing period, as the locomotive is not drawing any kind of power from the supply means, uh, that means it is moving under the influence of this kinetic energy stored. Also, during the uh, descent at a gradient, the same amount of kinetic energy stored into the locomotives, which can be returned back to the supply means using the regenerative braking. So, during the costing at descent at a gradient, it will be having uh, it will have stored some kinetic energy. Now, this kinetic energy can be returned, can be converted into electrical energy, and this energy can be converted back to the system using regenerative braking. Now, the energy generated during the regenerate, regeneration depends upon some factors like the speed variation speed changes i would rather write speed changes that is the uh, change in speed taking place during the regenerative period second would be the slope or the gradient how steep is the slope or how steep is the gradient and the third factor would be efficiency of the generation of electric motor that is while calculating the amount of energy generated during the regenerative braking we should consider the speed variations we should consider the gradient and we should consider the efficiency of the motor system let us try to drive an expression for the energy um, uh, return during the regenerative braking let us say v1 and V2 be the initial and final speeds. Final speeds during regeneration. So the kinetic energy stored stored at speed v1 would be half mv square m is the weight of the train and it is usually mentioned in as the dead weight so i will convert it in kilograms that is thousand times we i am considering we here because the train is accelerating v1 square where v1 is in kilometer per hour so i need to convert it into meter per meter per second so uh, i will multiply it with 1000 divided by 3600 square this will be in watt second now this is in watt second if i further convert uh, if i further wanted to write it in uh, watt per hour or watt hour then i need to further divide this by 3600 so uh, further it will be 1000 1 by 2 into 1000 we times v1 square into 1000 divided by 3600 square into 1 by 3600 now this unit will be in watt hour further solving it i will get 0 0.01072 we v1 square in watt hours similarly kinetic energy at 
speed v2 will be say uh, this is e2 this will be equal to 0 0.01072 we times w v2 square because only the speed has changed in, into these two expressions the dead weight or the effective weight of the train would have been same so the energy available during the regeneration would be the difference between the this energy and this energy so energy available for regeneration would be equal to say this speed is e1 and say this speed is e2 so it will be e1 minus e2 and this will be equal to 0 0.01072 we times v1 square minus v2 square and this will be in watt hours this energy is available due to the inertia or the motion of the locomotive but uh, if i assume the train is moving down the gradient then some energy will also be available due to the motion down the gradient so we should consider that amount of energy as well so the energy available energy available due to motion due to motion down the gradient or slope we already have an expression for it which is 27.25 times the gradient into the weight and the distance traveled during the gradient which is d dash now these two amounts of energies are available find out the total energy available during the regeneration we need to add this amount of energy with this amount of energy but some part of this energy is lost while overcoming the resist resistances hence the energy uh, lost uh, during uh, during overcoming the resistances we need to subtract that that, that energy from this energy so energy lost in overcoming the resistive forces is equal to 0 0.2778 times the dead weight of the train times the resistive forces times the distance traveled during the resistive movement motion we derived this formula in the previous lectures hence the total energy available for regeneration will be equal to the summation of energies energy available due to kinetic energy or inertia plus the energy available due to the motion down the gradient minus the energy lost in overcoming the resistive forces hence this is equal to 0 0.1072 we times v1 square minus v2 square plus 27 times g times w times the distance traveled during the gradient minus this amount of energy this is equal to 0 0.2778 w times r times d so this is the expression which uh, which says that which uh, gives us the total energy available after the regeneration but in this calculation we have not considered the efficiency of generation of a electric motor so we should consider that one too if eta be the efficiency of generation of electric motor
then the above expression will become so this is the required expression which gives us uh, the amount of energy generated by electric motor during regenerative braking now we should consider or uh, we should discuss some advantages and disadvantages of regenerative braking the first advantage would be uh, saving in operating cost as some amount of some amount of energy which is being utilized during the acceleration is returned back to the system hence it uh, helps in saving the operating cost of the uh, electric motors next advantage would be low maintenance of brake shoe and wheels as there is low low wear and tear on the brake shoes and wheels due to regenerative braking hence the the brake shoes and wheels requires low maintenance the next advantage is reduce running time due to high braking retardation this uh, regenerative braking facilitates uh, braking at higher speed without wear and tear hence the train can be run at higher speed so the running time of the train is reduced between the two stations so these are the advantages which are associated with uh, regenerative braking let us discuss the disadvantages also so the first disadvantage is additional equipment and circuitry is required because the uh, electrical energy which is being fed into the system needs to have the same uh, frequency as that of the supply system so uh, frequency converters are also required uh, which adds up to the cost thereby making it as a disadvantage of this uh, regenerative braking the next disadvantage is operation of substation becomes complicated and difficult due to the additional circuitry ordinary uh, labor cannot be employed at the substations skillful labor is required which adds up in the complication and difficulties of operation at the substation so the next disadvantage is this regenerative braking needs mechanical braking assistance to bring locomotive to the rest as the regenerative regenerative braking can only bring down the speed of the train but it cannot bring it to the rest hence uh, mechanical braking is required to assess the regenerative braking so these are the advantages and disadvantages associated with regenerative braking and that's it for the lecture thank you so much